So good evening, everybody. This is a new human experience podcast, and tonight is June sixteenth, twenty twenty, and the topic for tonight is the illusion of lack. Um, for the all of June, I will be talking more or less around the um, topic of money, and. The last two weeks, I've been talking about different aspects, and then tonight the theme is the illusion of lack. So, I actually um, just want to mention that tonight I'm going to start talking more about how to manifest, how to create our own reality. But before I go into that, I actually just want to bring out something. It to to just um, start off with before I shift the focus more back into manifestation. However, what I want to talk about is actually something that is re uh, that is related to the um, how we manifest. So I actually just want to start by asking you all to just start to just play this game with me. Is just think of your the state of your bank account right now, and just have a feeling for it, and then and then ask yourself this question: Is how do you feel when you look at the state of your bank account? Do you feel secure and peaceful about it, or not? So, just the first thing that comes to your mind: Do you feel good? Do you not? Do you feel anxious, or whatever it is that you feel about your bank account? You don't have to think too much about it. It's just the first thing that comes to your mind. How do you feel about it? So, most people, when asked about this, They would not feel at ease about the state of their bank balance because, and and it's not because they don't have enough money, regardless of what their the the balance of their bank account may be, because、um, as a whole, as humanity as a whole, is that we have a, a program. It's a collective program that somehow, no matter how much money we have. Um, there is always is always a sense that it is not quite enough. And why is that so? It's not because we don't have. It's not about the the num- number of、uh, digits that we have in the in our bank account. It's actually because、um, how we feel about our. Bank balance is not really based on the amount that is in our bank balance. It's actually how we feel is actually based on our beliefs about our bank balance, the beliefs about it. So a lot of the times, the in the in this the collective psyche, there is this belief that it, we don't have enough because it's not just we may have enough. For、um, to cover food on the table and a roof over our head. However, we are always in,、um, I would say, some anxiety that oh something may happen, so we need something extra in order to kind of give ourselves some cushion in case of unforeseen events. So it is this.、Um, Anxiety about the unknown, especially now, when there seems to be so much fear in the the being pumped into the collective、um, psyche, that this um I'm it's like it's more so now than ever that there is this feeling of unease, and it's not about. The amount of money we have in our bank balance is actually how we feel, what our beliefs are about how much is enough. So, why do I want to to bring out this point? Because it's really important to take a closer look at our beliefs. Not actually about money itself. It's really our beliefs 
about money, how we um, adopted all of these, because it's all concerning about manifestation. The way we manifest is that because we all live together in this beautiful place called Earth. So even though we can manifest things for ourselves, but a part of our manifestation is actually a shared manifestation. So there, we have some control over what we can create. However, it's not, we don't have 100% control over how we can manifest and create. So I just want to bring up the point that we, we are eternal essence. We are actually, we are spirit having a human experience. And because we are spirit and our spirit or our soul chose to be on earth, to be on this playground called earth right now. And because our soul made that choice. So on some level, we will always be provided for. Um, our soul already made that choice to come on earth to have an experience. And as long as we are alive, we will always be provided for in order to come and um, continue on and complete the experience that our soul wanted us to have while we are still here on earth. Now, that does not mean that we may be able to manifest or create anything that we want. However, we will always be able to manifest and create things that we need in order for us to continue our experience on earth. So very important to understand this. So more about manifestation. Um, we... Most of us manifest unconsciously because we, there's actually a few of us are conscious enough to um, be aware of everything that we manifest uh, or every um, thought process, everything that we do or um, know all the beliefs that actually support how we manifest. We manifest not. <clears throat> we manifest not really by um, what we want. For example, I want, I want to have a house to live in a house that's ten times bigger than the house that I'm currently living in right now. So let's say this is what I want. And um, so, just this is just an example. So if I want that then the, the thing is, um, because I live in a shared um, reality with all the other people, if my house is 10 times bigger, that means it will be, um, part of it will be on someone else, my neighbor's house. So maybe even uh, a few doors down, my neighbors would be affected. So my decision would be impinging on their reality as well. So in order for that to happen, then I would actually have to create a story about it. It's not just up to me, no matter how powerful I am at this moment is right now, I it's not up to me to all of a sudden will like have a creation that my the house that I'm living in right now is going to be 10 times bigger because 10 times bigger meaning that um, at least five or six houses um, that are neighboring me will have to be cleared out in order for my house to expand to 10 times bigger. And I'm quite sure. Um, my neighbors, not all of my neighbors, would be very thrilled about me trying to make that creation. So maybe some of them um, would be would be happy to co-create that with me, but may me not all of it. So that's what I mean by that we live in a shared reality. 
and that not all of our creation is completely under our control. Because in physical reality, there are things that um, we are shared environment. So when if I want to manifest something, I will have to create a story so that it will um, actually make that happen. For example, the, the story that I need to create is I may have to uh, offer to buy out the, my, my five or six of my neighbor's house as well and make sure that they have an exchange so that they are okay to move to a different location so that I can take over their house and then have somebody to come in to um, build a house that is 10 times bigger than the house that I'm in right now. That's one way of creating that reality for myself. Not the only way though, but that's one way that I can make uh, uh, create a story so that I can have what I want to create. Another way is if I really want to, if I truly, really want to live in a house that is 10 times bigger than the house that I'm living in now, and um, I may want to consider the alternative is to go and look for a house that is 10 times bigger than the one that I'm living in right now and move to that location. So that would be another way that I can make that happen. So that's when we're dealing with creating at a physical level, this is something that needs to be um, taken into consideration. So the point I want to stress is that when we manifest anything, we have to be mindful of the, the shared nature of our reality. And that's not just on the physical level. That's also um, on the belief level because when I create, I create from my beliefs as well. I don't just create from... Um, from my mind from okay i think this so therefore i'm just going to do it i also create from my beliefs whether my beliefs are consciously aware of i'm consciously aware of them or beliefs that i'm unconscious about and i don't know that they are lurking around so what do i mean by that let's say so if i want to live in a house that is 10 times bigger than the one I'm living in right now, the, um, of course, one of the, the belief that has to be lined up is that somehow I have to believe that I can, it's, I, I'm able to either have the money to buy the, the houses, the, the house that's big enough for me, or be able to buy my neighbors, a couple of my neighbor's houses, so I can build a house that is as big as the one that I wish. So the belief, one of my belief is that I have to have the resources as well. And if somehow, even though I want to live in a house that's 10 times bigger, but if I'm unconscious about any money beliefs that I have about having enough, then that may impact how I'm able to manifest the reality that I live in a house that is 10 times bigger. Um, so a lot of other things who have to come in as well. It's the other beliefs about whether I have the ability to create what it is that I want. So those are some of the more obvious ones. And then some of the less obvious ones would be um, beliefs about how um, <clears throat> maybe how other people may um, look at me differently. For example, if I have an unconscious belief that you know um, people that are rich are bad people, they have to they have to you know do something 
um, either illegal or do something that is um, or or be ruthless about being a, a, a um, really taking charge and going all out in order to um, you know, create money for themselves. If I have any beliefs about how people that have the kind of money that can you know create a, a house that's ten times bigger than the one that I'm living in now. If I have any of those beliefs about those people being bad, then on some level, I may start to sabotage myself and make it so that I cannot create that because I probably would value, because knowing myself, I value um, being a nice person, being a helpful person, but of course, um, I don't want to be a, a bad person or a ruthless person. So that's not me. However, if I'm not aware of those um, beliefs, then those beliefs, unconscious they may be, even though they may be, they would still interfere with the way that I can manifest what it is that I want, which is a house that's 10 times bigger, regardless of whatever reasons that I have about having a house that is that big. So those are things that needed to be looked at is our conscious and unconscious beliefs and make sure that within our belief system, everything is actually lined up to support it so that we can actually have what it is that um, I, I want to create or, and manifest. So those are really things to look at in terms of manifestation. Um, now I've been kind of beating around the, 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 the bush about how to manifest. So let me actually just in very um, few steps, in very simple few steps, just, just list it out so that you can all be aware of it. It's actually very simple. Um, the, the, the way to create anything or manifest anything, it's the steps are simple. But simple does not necessarily imply that it's easy. So let me just list those steps. So the first step to create or manifest anything is first is that you have to know what you want. Really be aware and mindful of what you want. And it's, and I really want to stress that know what you want. Why do I want to stress that? Is a lot of the times we don't really know what we want. We actually know what we don't want. And we um, have, and we will put it out in that I don't want to live in a small house. So, but that's not really saying what it is that you want. When you want to create and really manifest um, and, and have your manifestation be more smoothly, is to really know what you want and have a very clear picture of what it is that you want. And when I say picture, I don't just limit it to being visually knowing what you want, is you want to know what you want so precisely, so in detail, that you can actually, um, as though you're already experiencing it. So it's not just visual, you also know what, um, you also know how it smells, what you want, how does that smell? Um, for example, for the house, see the, the example of the house is, I don't just want a um, visually know the, the layout of the house, how big it is, but I actually want to know, okay, so when I look out of my house, what do I want to see? And also, what do I want to smell? What do I want to hear? Do I want to hear birds singing? Or do I want to smell trees growing? What it is that I want? 
because the more I know and have an idea, visually, audially, and also smells and even taste, if I have all of those um, other sensorial picture of what it is that I want, then it's actually um, easier for our um, for us and for the universe to give us and co-create with us what it is that we want. So first thing is know what you want. Know what you want so precisely and detailedly that you can see it, you can smell it, you can taste it, you can hear it, you can feel it, you can touch it. Uh, it's like you um, you can actually imagine touching. What does touching that, what uh, whatever it is that you want feels like, all of that. The more you know and have a clear picture of what it is that you want, the easier it is and the closer you get to actually manifesting, creating what it is that you want. So that's number one. So number two is actually, um, it's really where the, all of the discussion about beliefs comes in, is that you have to check within and really resolve any internal conflicts of you having what it is that you want. So um, things like how, how can you afford it? How can you somehow afford it? So that will be something that's fairly um, um, easy to, to be aware of is because we live in the, the material world is how do we get it? So if you have any conflicts about being able to afford something or how you can actually create it, if there's any conflicts about that, then you need to work on your beliefs in order to resolve that internal conflicts. And it's not just about how you can buy something, but also how um, having what it is that you want how having that is going to impact your relationship with your family, with your friends. How are they going to interact with you? How is that going to change how you interact with them? So all of that, because you don't manifest in a vacuum, just all by yourself. We live in a sheer reality. So you need to be able to think of all of those things. How is that going to impact the life, the relationship that you have right now and resolve any internal conflicts? Why is it important to resolve any, any sort of conflicts is that we actually deal, we are, we are an energetic being. It's an energetic world. Even though um, certain things may seem like they are solid, it's however, um, solid things are only a certain kind of energy. The energy is so, so slow and dense that it's, it actually is solid, that we can actually um, feel it, touch it. However, it's all just only vibration and frequency and energy and with energy energy goes to the path of least resistance that's why if you have any resistance any internal conflict about you being able to have what you want and create and manifest what you want then that is going to slow down and stop the manifestation that's why you have to actually um, dig deep into your own beliefs and really feel when you want, when you think of the thing that you want, the experience that you want. You have to check within and really get to, to, the, to the, um, the point where you feel completely aligned and that there is no internal conflicts. There is no um, doubt that you can have it. 
So when you can do that, then you know you are, it's the, the manifestation is very close. And then the third thing you need to do is to keep feeling all the feelings you would feel when you already have what you want. Because we manifest by how, by our feelings, feelings, beliefs, and all that contributes to, it's really an energetically, it contributes to manifesting and creating what we want. So feel, get in touch with all the feelings that you would feel when you already have, when you're already experiencing the reality that you most prefer. So feel all the feelings as though you already have what you want. So that's the number three. And then the last one is, now once you have all of that, then act as if you already has all that you want. Act meaning tick action and from the, that being. So go from that being of already having that which you want to uh, manifest and create. Act as if you already has all that you want. So that means your internal picture is you already have it. I'm already living in the house that is 10 times bigger. And so how, what would I do when I'm already in that house? So those would be the actions that I would start to take. And when you do that, when you act as if, when you act from, you already have that. And, and then the last one is to really let go, let go. Let go meaning that you um, let go of needing to control how it's going to be manifested for you. For example, I um, mentioned that if I want to live in a house that's 10 times bigger than the house that I'm living in right now, there are at least two ways that I, can, I, that I mentioned. One is to actually build a house that is 10 times bigger in the same spot, only um, I would have to uh, somehow acquire the, the couple of houses that's close to, that is right next to mine, so that I can build that house. Or the alternative is to find a location somewhere that has a house that is 10 times bigger and be willing to move over there, wherever there is. So that's what I mean by let go of control is don't um, that um, is don't um, limit the way the universe can give you what it is that you want. Because the more you limit, the more you kind of try to control how it is going to be delivered to you then the, the more you um, make it harder for your manifestation to come true. Because if you, if I only um, think of that, I want the money so that I can build the house that is 10 times bigger, then I would actually narrow it down to like the, the, the reality that I have to make that much money in order to do that. However, other things, the universe may deliver the same thing to me, the same experience to me in different ways. Maybe someone decided that they want to donate a place, a house for me that is 10 times bigger than the one that I want that I'm living in right now so that I can build a, um, like a, a school so that I can build a school in order to have all these um, different really powerful teachers to come and, um, and teach 
wisdom kind of uh, uh, wisdom teaching and all that like if i only allow myself to use money to to have make that happen then i actually um negated or uh, prevented other ways of the universe bringing me what i want in different ways somebody may decide to donate the house or donate um, a piece of land so and then other people may want to donate their labor and other people may want to donate the the bricks and all the other um, like raw materials that is needed for the house to be built so if I only narrow my focus on focusing on I want the money in order to have that house then I'm actually cutting off all the other ways that the universe can deliver what I want to me so that's what I mean by letting go of control and just know that what I need to do is just follow through these steps know what I want resolve all the internal conflicts feel all the feelings that i would feel when i'm already living and having this this house or whatever it is that i want to manifest and then act and then take action from the the space of already having everything that i've asked for and also let go of control let go of the form of how the universe is going to deliver what I want to me. So it kind of five things. And, and also um, the one more, I would say five A, maybe five and a half is one more is to take time to keep this image of what it is that I want and keep resolving and making sure that um, there are no internal conflicts and feeling all the feelings and also taking action as though i already have what i want and keep on letting go of the, the, the letting go of control so when i start to do take all of these steps and, and iterate and um, make it so that at some point I would be in that vibration of being able to experience the manifestation that I want. So that's actually how, how simple it is that manifestation can come can come to uh, can really happen so that's all of that that's the simple answer to how and how we can manifest and create anything that we we want <clears throat> knowing and making sure that there are no internal conflicts feeling all the feelings and act as if we already have it and let go of control those five it's all the 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 five simple steps that is necessary to create and manifest all the things everything that we want